Hey everyone, Paul SM. Welcome to another inbox review. Now, the other day I reviewed the Fujimi 16 scale Testarossa Spider. Now, upon starting that, um, the front windscreen surround was cracked, so that broke, that needed gluing. The intake vanes on the side are just absolutely nasty on the kit. And that, along with the broken chassis and a few other parts, that thing is going to need some serious scratch building. Which, I'll be honest, I'm just not in the right frame, frame of mind at the moment. Uh, I've had a bit of a crap month with one thing or another. Um, so, yeah, I just want a nice, easy build. Um, so, I picked another kit, as you might have guessed, the Fujimi Koenig Kuntash. So, it's not going to be an easy build. It's still going to take a bit of work. We still do a bit of scratch building here and there. But it was either this or the Fujimi F40 which is a fantastic looking car, one of my favourite Ferraris. Now the problem is, I believe the F40 is a successor to the 288, or the evolution of the 288, I suppose. I believe they share the same engine, I would have painted it in the exact same colour, Rosso Red. So we're doing that as a video build not long ago, it would have been a very same, samey kind of build, and I did want to do that, because not only is that a bit boring for me to model, it's a bit boring for you to watch. And I want to keep things a bit more interesting if I can. So I've never ever built a Kuntash, ever. Um, so it's a first time for everything. Now I will admit, it's not my first choice of car. Uh, there's a lot more supercars out there that I prefer. Uh, but watch some videos from Harry's Garage on his and his trip through Europe with it. Uh, it's a beautiful car. It really, really is. It's very agricultural, literally, if you know Lamborghini's origins. Uh, but this Koenig one with the different side skirts and rear uh, spoiler, it just looks really nice. So I plan to build this in pearl white, Tammy TS pearl white. Um, and this is hopefully all going to be well, the uh, the next video build on the channel. So, yes. So there we go. Um, let's crack on with the review and let's have a see what we get in the box. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, same kind of box size as the Testarossa we reviewed the other day. Uh, obviously with a completely different box art because it's a completely different car to state the obvious. This is the Koenig Kuntash, absolutely fantastic box art again. Fujimi does a great job on these, absolutely wonderful. And this special edition of the Kuntash is uh, only slightly different looking. I think it's only, it's this, the side skirt, uh, the rear intake and the rear uh, arch is different. I think it's a different rear spoiler on it. And I think for the most part, it's pretty much standard from what I remember. I may be wrong. Um, Fujimi does several boxings like this of different Lamborghini Kuntashes. Um, but this is the one I chose. Like I said, I bought this. Oh, let me see. Um, late 2020, I think I paid £120 for it. Quite a lot. Um, but this is definitely one of the more rarer kits that are out there to get currently. Uh, I just think it's a beautiful looking car and it will be done in white. As I've already explained, my reasons for not doing the Testarossa, and there was another kit. I like this because different car, the Lambo, it's not the Ferrari, and we can do this in white. It'll probably be pearl white. Uh, it's Tamiya's pearl white. I forget the number now at the TS range, uh, just for a little bit of difference. So beautiful box art on the front. On the side, we've got those iconic profiles of the Kuntash, um, front, side, and rear. Very, very cool. Bit of info about the car there as well. So um 5.2 liter v12 48 valve 455 horsepower uh certainly no slouch back in the day because these were what late 70s if I remember right the contest was originally uh designed and released uh open all retractable type headlights so the pop-ups work openable from bonnet engine food apparently i think we said that on the tester as well didn't it and rear cargo door open all gun wheel doors 
uh, super detail engine and cockpit, and super detail Pirelli Centura Centurato P7 tires as well. And there's the color cool out there, which I'm going to assume is in Mr. Color, uh, sorry, Mr. Hobby Aqueous range colors. On the other side, we've got a bit of info about the car itself. If you want to read that, you can pause that and have a read. Um, and if you're Japanese, you can read that one. German, you can read that one. French, you can read that one. Uh, I'm going to guess, a bit of ignorance now, that that's Chinese. I assume it is. So, similar layout to the other Testarossa. I'm doing this literally because I'm going to review it to build it. That's the idea of it. So, let's have a look. We've got instructions. Clear parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's a few more sprues. So, about eleven sprues, tyre bag, chrome bits, quite a lot of chrome bits as well. Iconic. Lamborghini wheels, which are iconic. Tires in here, screws, springs, wire. Pretty much standard what we had in the Testarossa kit from last time. And then this truly iconic body shape of the Lamborghini Countach as well. Very nice body on this one. So it's it's definitely going to be a little bit of a nicer build than the Testarossa. A little bit disappointed about that kit. But we'll get to it at some point. So there's going to be lots of bag rustlings, so do bear with me. Um, I will do my best to keep it at a minimum. What I'm going to do, though, is uh, I'm going to bring my camera back down, so bear with me. Right then, there we go. Let's move the instructions out of the way for now. And uh, let's have a look at our body shell. So, like I say, pretty nice molded. We're going to have to be very careful of these A-pillars. They are pretty thin and Fujimi plastic, as I found out with the Testarossa, is rather brittle. So we need to take our time here. If we can't, hopefully this window surround is black, which I'm pretty much sure it is on this. We'll leave these in for as long as possible. People are going to ask me why all through the build, and it's purely and simply to give it strength is the idea of it. Uh, it's a really nice molded body. We've got a few seam lines removed front and rear, but overall, it's actually really well done. Obviously, we've got this strength and support to take off at the back. We've got some marks to the body because, obviously, it's a 35-year-old kit. Uh, but overall, the body is looking pretty nice, pretty sharp there. Obviously, we've got the doors to go in, luggage compartment, engine compartment. There's various vents and all sorts of malarkey to be put in place there as well. So I'm going to pop that back in its bubble roof, bubble roof, bubble wrap protective cover. Just going to grab bits as we go because they're all over the shop. Uh, and I'm not going to sit around for uh, ages on all these because we literally did this review the other day. So the iconic, truly iconic wheels for the Lamborghini. Um, now these are quite like, nicely finished, but they do have some marks to them. Um, so we will refinish these, but they're a truly iconic cloverleaf style wheel. Uh, very nice. I'm assuming this is a spare. Um, I'm assuming that is that a steel wheel as a spare, I guess so. And our mirrors there as well. The chrome isn't chrome, it's a very satin effect chrome. Which I'll be honest, I would be half tempted to leave the wheels as they are, but they are a little bit marked in places. But you know what? They're, they're actually quite good, so I'm tempted to leave those as are. They look really, really nice. That's quite nice. Gonna pop them back in there. We've got a bag here full of chrome parts. And oh my god, this car has a lot of their carburetors. That's what they look like. So sorry about the bag rustlings. 
So we've got a couple of parts here, very finely moulded parts. There, let me zoom out, I'm zoomed in too far, excuse me. Very finely moulded parts there, not 100% sure what they're for. But I worry about the Fujimi plastic, it is very brittle. So parts like that, you need to be ultra careful, um, cut them off. Really need to take your time. But then, right, and then a whole chrome sprue. So we've got brake discs, which aren't the nicest. We've got some intake. No, they can't be. It must be horn trumpets. I'm assuming these are carbs. Two, four, six carbs. What, two per cylinder? Take it. We've got some chrome parts for headlights. Lots and lots of parts there. Assuming they're the uh, covers for the uh, can cover. Rocker cover, whatever you want to call it. Um, not the nicest kind of chrome work. It's the same kind of dull finish as is on the wheels, which suits the wheels. I don't think it suits these smaller parts as much. Um, so they'll be stripped. More than likely be stripped for the most part. Um, it's not the best finish either, but the parts look all right. Not too bad. Great this don't look great, but that seems to go hand in hand with Fujimi because of the type of weight that the wheels mount up. So I'm assuming... Must be a back for the wheel somewhere, but the chrome part are there. Now, tyres are in here. I don't really want to open it if it can help it, but I think we're going to have to. So we've got the same screws, same wire, uh, and same springs as Testarossa have, so I'm not even going to bother looking at those. If you haven't seen the Testarossa review, go and have a look. It's still a nice kit. And we will still build it at some point, just not right now. So I'm going to grab one of the tyres. You've got the metal axle in there as well, but everything else... Uh, there's a couple of metal um, pieces here. These are for the scissor doors. We'll explain those as we go through the instructions later. Tires, really well done, really well treaded, as you can see. And then on the side, marked Pirelli. Um, got the tire size on there as well. Nice touch, nice Pirelli logo. And they're nice and clean, actually. Get them all wipe over, get rid of the wisps of rubber from the middle. And it'll be good to go there as well. Instructions, we'll put them on side for now. We've got another chrome sprue. This is a bit more chromier, is that the word? So, in here, we've got lots of chrome parts. There's some engine parts, more mirror parts, are they? Yeah, different mirror parts, okay. Obviously, this is going to have a couple of different parts here, because this is the Koenig version. Tearing mirror, struts. Gear lever. Looks like a brake master cylinder there as well. Um, not too bad a chrome. It's, it's nice and reflective. You can see it's actually not too bad. It's not too thick either. It's just a bit lacking in some areas. Like if you look at this license plate here, if you look around the seven and the zero, if you can see in there, the finish isn't the greatest. Whereas everywhere else, it's not too bad. So not bad. And apparently, this is called a Cantash. C-A-U-N-T-A-C-H. Good old Lamborghini Countach. Hmm. Interesting. So, there you go. Uh, we've also got another Countach badge in there as well. I hope to God that's not a label for uh, anything important. I don't think it is. I think it's just off the sprue. This fell off, but it's certainly interesting. Hmm. Bit of broken English, lost in translation. Big old sprue here with the chassis on it. Uh, again, battery operator has got the on-off switch underneath. Not as obvious on the other one. I'm assuming this is for the battery compartment. Um, lots of small parts on here. Parts in suspension, the hubs, steering, subframes, shocks, all sorts of stuff. Spare wheel. Okay, which is moulded into the luggage compartment, which is crap. So that's going to be fun to paint. Thanks a lot. So yeah, not really all that much to write home about there. It's just pretty standard moulded plastic. Interior tub, really basic. Is there a separate interior tub? There is, so that's going to be better. Um, and yeah, just basic plastic moulded parts. A bit vague in places, a bit of flash here and there. But well, yeah, it's the, the plastic moulded bits that really nondescript bits as such. So we won't dwell on those too much. 
next up and like I say I'm just grabbing these in any order at the minute no particular order these are engine components so we've got a sump uh, transmission by the look of it um, all different components exhausts it's looked very very thin for an exhaust of this monstrous V12 hmm okay let's have a look at those but again nice recess detail on the side of the uh, I'm assuming that's the engine some's got some nice recess parts on it cylinder heads I'm assuming this is a cam belt cover cam chain cover I don't know hard to tell uh, transmission, yeah. Once all painted up, a bit dry brushing, bit of washing there. It looked pretty good. Again, nothing all that really interesting to look at, but a bit of detail where there is detail. In here we have. So I know there's two sprues for the steering wheel, so I'm assuming that's the standard steering wheel. And then here I'm assuming. We've got obviously the dashboard, engine covers. So they weren't before. I don't know what's going on there with those then. Radiators. No idea what's going on with all these bits. These are the backs for the wheels. Uh, some intake hoses. Uh, part of the rear bumper, is it? It must be. I think it is. Lots and lots of different parts on there. These are really well molded, actually. Nice and crisp. Mirrors, mirrors are there as well. Has it got different mirrors to the standard car? It may well have. Dashboards there. The dashboards have got really nice texture on it. If you can see that. So that, that should be painted. Doesn't even need flocking. Instrument panel. Uh, the dials and that are all there. They don't look too bad either. Quite nice detail on those. And then the Lamborghini engine covers there. With the famous Lamborghini logo. Some nice texture. How they're going to be painted, I don't quite know. We've got some grills, uh, some radiators. I assume they're radiators. Um, and then the standard steering wheel there as well. Again, nicely moulded. So I know there is a separate sprue in here, which has got the extra pony bits on. So we're not going to use all of this. What are we going to use? I don't 100% know. So... I'm assuming that's a standard spoiler. I'm assuming these are the standard uh, wheel arch extensions. We've got different engine covers, all sorts of different parts. I've got no idea what is going on in here. Different uh, body panels, giant distributor, absolutely huge that thing is. Lots and lots of components, different mirrors. Yes, I'm not 100% sure what's going on in here. Different steering wheel. We're not going to know until we look at the instructions and figure out what is actually used. But what is there is nicely molded. A little bit of flash here and there. But you can literally get rid of it with your thumbnail. So not the end of the world. Uh, a little bit of cleaner. We've got the engine cover there, which should be the same for both standard and the Koenig version too. And again, nothing really too interesting to look at there. But... Very well done, very well moulded. I don't know if the little steering wheel looks a little bit too small. I don't know. We'll see which one it calls for. This is Sprue S. And we'll have a look at that when we get in the instructions in a little bit. Now we've got interior parts here. The seats are falling off, or the seat front out. Make some rustling noises. Always good. So the seats are here. You've got the seat backs and the seat fronts. So they clip in there, well, they glue in there together. Got the cockpit itself, door cards, something else. Don't know what it is. Um, but, yeah, all plain detail, nothing too interesting. Some kind of textured pattern to the uh, seats as well. Pretty boring. And, again, for the Cantash, C-A-U, yeah, Cantash. Yeah, okay, it's one way of saying it, I suppose, isn't it? Now, we've got a separate sprue here for the spoiler and the side panels as well. So, I'm trying to figure out what is different. Are these actually just extensions that fit on? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how these fit. Hopefully, they're going without too much trouble. So, a nice big part. So, you're going to have to get these up on place. 
and quickly try them. Should we try one quickly? We'll just cut one off very quickly. And have a little look how it goes on. We'll just whip it off. And have a quick look. Ah, okay. I got this the wrong way around, am I being stupid? No, I'm not. There we go, that's how that goes. Okay, well it's not that bad. Fits on there quite well actually. There's a little bit of a gap at the back, but once you tack all that on with glue, clamp it on, get it all glued in place, I'm assuming the front one fits over too, but yeah, it's not too bad. I don't think it's going to give us too much of an issue. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that fits on quite well, actually. Certainly gives it a lovely wide arch stance, doesn't it? But yeah, hopefully that won't give us too much trouble, but it looks like as long as it's clamped, Get the old Tamiya extra thin in there and inside. Maybe a bit of CA glue in there for strength. That shouldn't be too much trouble. So overall, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. It's always a point of contention on parts like that. Are they going to actually bloody fit? So that's good to see. And then the different rear spoiler, which I think is a lot prettier than the standard one. It's not as in your face, I think. A, bit, a little bit flatter and overhangs down. I think it gives a nicer stance and look to the car as well then we've got the doors so these probably will be the worst fitting part of the kit we've got a different engine cover as well so again we're going to have to see which one is used going to take careful attention to all the different parts but the doors do actually work those metal bars go in the doors do actually lift up or they're supposed to anyway so you got a little hinge here at the front where they're going to fit in right away i do not know that's something i have to be tested and tried it can sure look like a bit of a crack in the plastic and hopefully it's no, it's just a mark yeah it's just a mark um so yeah, which one's going to get used? I don't know. Again, it's from the count, count, Countach. That's a major spelling mistake, isn't it? So yeah, different engine cover there as well. So like I said, when we go for instructions, we'll have a little look and see. Right, what is left? Clear parts. Let's see what we've got here. So these are a bad point of the kit. They are they every Fujimi kits are terrible glass, isn't it? Um. The way they mount isn't the best as well, but luckily we've got some decals as well. Let's have a look at the decals, which are actually not too badly yellowed at all. Might be worth sticking in a window for a day or two, but we've got some Lambo wheel decals, Lamborghini badges themselves, Koenig specials. Yep, decals look good. Clear parts. Okay, as per usual, the front screen is pretty well scratch to hell but we can polish that up but it's a nice flat part so i got some clear acetate that uh, myself alan and simon got that might well replace it and depending on how this fits into the door we can always look at replacing the side windows as well headlights rear lights again typical marred horrible clear plastic if i zoom in i'll try and show you what i mean you can see that there there you go it's the real letdown of the kit. The clear parts. On this, not too bad because you're going to paint these up red and yellow. Headlights aren't too bad because they've got plenty of detail on them. Repeater lights. Um, but like parts like this, again, smaller parts, not too bad. But on the windscreen, very, very prominent. It's not the worst. And to be honest, I'll probably have a go of polishing it up. We'll get some... Um, Got the name of the stuff now. Give me a second. It's in the drawer. What is it? I've completely forgotten. Novus. My God. 
we get some novice polish on it because that's what it's designed for and see if we can get some of those scratches out get a bit more of a shine out if we can we'll use it if not we'll replace it but you can see it is pretty nasty plastic's quite heavily marked and scratched but it's still usable should you need to uh, and with it being flat it should be pretty easy to replace if needed so that is all the sprues so i'm going to grab our instructions and we'll have a little look at what we've got in here let me straighten you all up so number one you got the parts layout anything blacked out is what we're not using s we're using s apparently of the steering wheel isn't there so is S the larger one or the smaller one? Can't remember now. Let me have a look about wrecking the joint. S must have been the smaller one. Okay. Well, I suppose you can pick and choose which one you put in. It's your kit after all. So yeah, what I tend to do is cut all the parts off and put them in my plastic box. This thing. Uh, this and my other little storage compartment that I have. What we can do is we can go through and pick off any parts that shouldn't be there and keep them separate so we don't get confused. But there's that, and then on the other side, you've got your decal layout as well, depending where you want to put them. Um, some instructions on building the kit, you know, don't poke your eye out with the box or, um, you know, I don't know, jump off a cliff while putting the decal on. It's always random stuff. And then the color call out in Mr. Hobby, Aquas, and Mr. Color as well, and all the legends for the instructions there as well. Pretty standard stuff. Tony Kuntash special. Um, bit of info there if you want to read it about Koenig themselves. A bit interesting to read. Okay. And we're on to the instructions. So basic assembly really. Start with the transmission, the engine, all the framework for the engine down here. Quite elaborate actually. Suspension. Uh, radiator fans in there as well, getting the wheels on. Obviously, we won't do it in this order. It'd be the bodywork first, getting the engine in place. It's an interesting shape of engine, I'll give it that. Okay, distributor there as well, with all this wiring. Again, pretty interesting. The exhaust, which I think looked too small for me, but. Who am I to say? Onto the back box at the bottom as well. Over onto the interior. Pretty simple interior. Have a look at it. The luggage compartment, dashboard. Uh, the door's getting these to work. So you put the metal bar in. There's a piece at the back to hold it, and that should move up and down. Uh, obviously, the glass fits in place. Oh, that's intersection there. Okay, is it framed on the front? Is it? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, it is. There's a little frame to go in there, too. Okay, that's going to make things a little bit more difficult as well, isn't it? Because we're going to have to paint that, paint in 2K that separately, and then stick it on at the end. Okay. Just to make life a bit more difficult. And then popping the doors in place, uh, hoping that they work. I don't know. don't know. If all else fails, they'll be glued shut. It's one of those, isn't it? Then we've got some pop up headlights. And again, the assembly for those going in place. Luggage compartment cover. Glass goes on from the outside, does it? Shut the front door. No, can't go on from the outside. That'd be silly. I can't go on from the outside. Um, and then we've got different engine covers. So on, and then on to the rear wing. Get some of the lights in, some of the different covers it needs to put in. So if you do the body work, you have to go through and mark all this to make sure you know what is what, where it's going. So that'll be the first job we do later on. Make sure we get everything that needs to be put in, put in now. And then get our arches on, front bumper on, rear spoiler, and then mount on the body. So, typical instructions, same as the Testarossa kind of thing. Um, for a large-scale car, you've got, what, eight pages of instructions? So, you don't get a lot in there, and there's quite a lot of parts in this one. So, 
all I'll say is you've got to keep your wits about you. And obviously on this one, it's getting the part cutting off it as well. So you have to do some careful trimming. Make sure everything fits uh, before you commit to glue. And make sure you've got all the right parts because there's different part callouts for different items. Isn't there? Right then, there we are. So I think there's a bit more in this kit than the Testarossa, to be honest. I think there's a few more parts in there. It's probably going to be as troublesome. The doors are the biggest point of contention. And to throw things in the mix, they are lift-up scissor-type doors that work. So are they going to work? I haven't got a clue. I think it's going to need some test fitting and trial and error to fit. So we've got a lot of prep to do on this one. So I've got a feeling the first video on this might not even be as usual where I get it all to clear. I think the first one we'll be looking to get to primer. I think. I'll play it by ear. We'll see how it goes. Um, but there's a lot of parts to put on and a lot of dry fitting and clamping and make sure everything fits before we even commit to getting to clear on it. So bear with me on that. No idea when we're going to start it. Uh, maybe today or tomorrow. Um, we'll see. But it's a build that will uh, definitely be started. We've got the Audi on the go as well. So part of the Audi will be up just after part one of this. We've still got the Mustang F51 on the go and the Warhammer Knight is still there. They're all there to be worked on. Um, yeah, like I say, it, I'm not going to get into this. So it's just been a horrendous month this month with one thing and the other. If you saw my negativity video, there's more ongoing. Plus we have to have our Jack Russell Marlowe put down on Friday. Uh, if you remember, I had him on the bench update a while back. He, um, yeah, he just got old and was uh, had a few health issues. And we had to make the, the uh, horrendous decision to put him down on Friday. So one thing after another. So that's why I can't cope with a full in-depth build. It's going to take a lot of uh, concentration and mucking around. I just need something to get on with and build. And hopefully this will uh, garner a bit of interest from you guys and for me as well. So, yes, looking forward to starting this one. Sorry about that, Hannah. I strolled in as I was finishing off. Sounds wrong, doesn't it? Anyway. Um, so, yeah, it was a bit of a crappy month, but we'll, we'll push on and uh, move forward. Uh, and uh, like I said, hopefully this will be an interesting build. And I think it looked good in white as well. Uh, as soon as I got this kit and I showed it online, every, loads of people said, you've got to build it white. And I think it suits it. I think red or white looks good on these, but I think white is the best one. There we are. So, if you want to support future videos on the channel, there's a Patreon me link in the description down below, as well as a PayPal me link as well. Check out the National Scale Model Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, my Paul ISM Facebook page, along with the Bench page, the Offer Hangar group, the GB group as well. I make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification so you get notified of all my new videos. And give the video a thumbs up or thumbs down. And please leave a comment. I love reading all your comments. The uh, support and uh, positive feedback for the builds really drives me forward on this one. If you're disappointed in seeing the test Ross, I do apologise. I was really looking forward to building that one. Uh, I've done a lot of research and looked around in that. And yeah, when, it, when I cut it off the screw today, it was gutting to see that it broke. It's repairable. We will build it. It's back up on the shelf up there. Uh, it's just not one for now. My head's not in the right place at all for something like that. So uh, whether it's in the right place or something like this, I don't know. We'll see. But hopefully you'll see a part of this up in the next few days. So there we go. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.